This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our worship this morning as we come together on Michael and All Angels, the Feast of Michael and All Angels. So we'll be talking with the, the, the children about that in a little while, and uh, that is our focus for today, is on Michael and all of the angels. We begin with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. You will find it on the screen in front of you, and I ask you to stand as you are able. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Our gathering hymn for this morning is in uh, the Lutheran Book of Worship, number 549, Praise my soul, the King of heaven.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I'm going to let you be seated for a minute. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our hymn of praise for today. So today, as we celebrate the Feast of Michael and all angels, uh, many people in our time do not put much stock in angels. But I would say to you this morning that angels do a lot for us. They take part in councils, they give God advice, they fight God's battles, and they model how to give praise. Philip Melanchthon, a titan of the church and a colleague of Martin Luther's at Wittenberg, wrote a hymn text for this very day, for Michael Mass. It's called, Lord God, We All to Thee Give Praise, which has been set to a very familiar hymn tune. The choir is going to begin uh, our hymn of praise by echoing the song of the angels. They're going to do it for three verses, and then I'm going to invite you to stand at that point. You'll see on the screen it'll say verse 7 and verse 8. That's where I'm going to ask you to join in. We're going to become all a part of that heavenly host on those last two verses. So this is, Lord God, we all to thee give praise.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you have wonderfully established the ministries of angels and mortals. Mercifully grant that as Michael and the angels contend against the cosmic forces of evil, so by your direction they may help and defend us here on earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, whom we worship and praise with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. We got a small Sunday school today. Wow. Everybody's gone away. I want you guys to come with me. Come on. Come. James, come on. Come on, Ethan. We're talking about angels today, right? Right? Come on. Come on, over. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Do you see this person? What do they have? What do they have, Ethan? Wings. They, yes. This is the angel Gabriel who blows the horn and proclaims God and that God is coming. So this is one of the angels that we have here in the church. We have two more angels. Do you know where they are? Where are they? Actually, those aren't angels. They, well, you know what? They might be angels because some angels don't have wings. There's no wings on this one. There's no wings on... Oh, there are wings on this one. So that's an... Yeah. So that one, that could be Raphael. It could be Uriel. It's one of the archangels. We got two more angels that are here in the church. Do you know where they are? Where are they? Do you see them up there? Come on, let's go. Let's go see them. So here we have, yes, two angels that are on either side of the altar. They remind us of how the angels are always there supporting Jesus. They're always there as part of God's heavenly kingdom. They're always there around us, surrounding us. They are with us all the time. So that's what I want you to remember today, is that angels are always with us. You can think about these angels right here. And think about how they are with you. We all have our guardian angels. So these are our guardian angels for the church here at Trinity. So angels sometimes have, what are they? Wings? Sometimes they don't. So you'll never know who an angel actually is. We can always be entertaining angels in our lives. So always remember to be good and to think about how you can be in the presence of God's angels, okay? Quick, that's a quick one today. Now you, now the three of you, normally there's like 20 of you, three of you can go down and you can have Sunday school, and she's off, she's ready to go. Oh, she's coming too? Okay, so four, you have four. All right, we're gonna sing you out. We're gonna sing the third verse. They never rest nor sleep as we. Their whole delight is but to be with the Lord Jesus and to keep the little flock thy land. We now turn our attention to the reading of God's Word. These are the appointed readings for September 29th, the Festival of Michael and All Angels. The first lesson is taken from the book of Daniel and the 10th and the 12th chapters. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. A hand touched me and pulled me to my hands and knees. 
Daniel, he said, greatly beloved, listen carefully to my message and get up on your feet, stand to attention. I've been sent to you to bring you news. When he had said this, I stood up, but I was still shaking. Relax, Daniel, he continued. Don't be afraid. From the moment you decided to humble yourself to receive understanding, your prayer was heard, and I set out to come to you. But I was waylaid by the angel prince of kingdom of Persia and was delayed for a good, a good three weeks. But then Michael, one of the chief angel princes, intervened to help me. I left him there with the prince of kingdom of Persia. And now I'm here to help you understand what will eventually happen to your people. The vision has to do with what's ahead. At the time, Michael, the great angel prince, champion of people, will step in. It will be a time of trouble, the worst trouble the world has ever seen. But your people will be saved from the trouble, everlasting one found written in the book. Many who have been long dead and buried will wake up, some to eternal life, others to eternal shame. Men and women who have lived wisely and will shine brilliantly like the cloudless star-strewn night skies. And those put others on the right path to the life will glow like stars forever. This is the word of the Lord. The appointed psalm for the morning is Psalm 103, which is found on page 264 in the Lutheran Book of Worship. We will read verses 1 to 5 and 20 to 22 responsively by half verses. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless your holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things and your youth is renewed like the angels. Bless the Lord, you angels of his, you mighty ones who do his bidding. Bless the Lord, all you have, all you his hosts. You ministers of him who do his will. Bless the Lord, all work of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The second lesson is taken from the Revelations of John, of the, or the 12th chapter. War broke, up, broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought the dragon. A great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven diadems on his head. The dragon and his angels fought back, but were no match for Michael. They were cleared out of the heaven. Not a sign of them left. The great dragon, ancient serpent, one of called devil and Satan, the one who had led the whole earth astray, thrown out, and all his angels thrown out with him, thrown down to earth. Then I heard a strong voice out of the heavens saying, salvation and power are established, kingdom of our grace, kingdom of our God, authority of his Messiah, the accuser of our brothers and sisters thrown out who accused them day and night before God. They defeated him through the blood of lamb and the bold word of his witness. They weren't in love with themselves. They were willing to die for Christ. So rejoice, O heavens, and all those, and all who lives there, but doomed to earth and sea. For the devil come down onto you with both feet 
He's had a great fall. He's wild and raging with anger. He has much time and he knows it. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The 70 came back triumphant. Master, in your name, even the demons dance to your tune and submit to us. Jesus said, I know. I saw Satan fall, a bolt of lightning out of the sky. See what I've given you? Safe passage as you walk on snakes and scorpions, and protection from every assault of the enemy. No one can put a hand on you. All the same, the great triumph is not in your authority over evil, but in God's authority over you and presence with you. Not what you do for God, but what God does for you. That's the agenda for rejoicing. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Angels are not cute. They're not cute like those ones that are down here. They're not cute like these ones that you see up here. And angels are not just for kids. Let me start today by dealing with uh, a few generally held views of angels and what are the facts about angels. So, no, cherubs are not little baby angels. Cherubs have four feet, four feet, and they look like a sphinx with wings, which is a whole lot different than what you probably thought about cherubs. And no, people don't become angels when they die. Angels are a whole different order of God's creation. And again, no, angels do not have to earn their wings like Clarence in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. In fact, not all angels have wings, just as I told the children. But there are some who have as many as six wings. And yes, the Bible tells us that there are guardian angels. However, we don't have any one of them, I think, that looks kind of like Michael Landon. Do you remember Michael Landon? Yeah, and you remember that, uh, that show, Touched by an Angel? Yeah, we don't, we don't get angelic advice like that from Michael Landon. But the Bible tells us that there are millions and millions of angels that are at God's command and at our service. When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, we are told that an angel came and strengthened him. Jesus himself told his disciples, Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? And so the, the hosts of heaven, they stand at attention, always ready to do God's will at any moment, of any hour, any day. God's angels are on call at all times. They are always ready and available to carry out God's plans. You know, there are about 600 references, 600, 600, 600 references to angels throughout the Bible. 600, that's a lot. So let's take a look at a few of them. We go right back to the beginning. In Genesis, angels guard 
the Garden of Eden with flashing swords. In Ezekiel, they overpower the prophet with visions of multi-winged creatures who guard the throne of God. Angels visited the home of Lot and took him and his family by the hand and led them out of Sodom and Gomorrah. During the time of Moses, an angel of death was sent to all the homes in Egypt, but passed over the homes of the Israelites who had placed blood on their door frames. Angels closed the mouths of lions and protected Daniel. The angel Gabriel told Mary she would be the mother of the long-expected Messiah. The angels proclaimed the birth of Jesus and they sang their song of good news to the shepherds. An angel warned Joseph in a dream not to divorce Mary. And later the angel warned Joseph to take Mary and the Christ child to Egypt to get away from the murderous plot of King Herod. Angels brought God's message of hope to the childless Abraham and Sarah and also to Zechariah and Elizabeth. The angels proclaimed the message of our Lord's resurrection. An angel rolled the stone away from the tomb of Jesus and announced the good news that I know you're looking for him. You're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's not here. He has risen from the dead. The function of the angels is to praise God and to be his messengers in this world to the church and to the people of God. They carry the believer like Lazarus to Abraham's bosom. The angel also rejoices over every sinner who repents. So there you have it. Angels, angels, angels everywhere. The Bible teaches us that God created the angels. At one time, no angels existed. There was nothing but the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. St. Paul writes to us in his letter to the Colossians, For by God all things were created, things that are in heaven and that are on earth, both visible and invisible. And angels are indeed among the invisible things made by God, for all things were created by him and for him. His angels are his secret agents and his messengers and his warriors. All of the angels are messengers of God to God's people. Just think of that poor village girl named Mary whose life was changed forever by the message that was given to her by the angel Gabriel. Angels are not made of flesh and bone like us. They are spirits created by God, and they can become visible in human form if God deems it necessary. And here's a really important point for us to remember. Angels were created by God, and they were given free will. Just as free will was given to Adam and Eve. That's why there are fallen angels like Satan. We heard it in the readings today. There is this mighty angelic conflict that is being fought even to this day because Satan and a multitude of other angels chose to rebel against God. The prophet Isaiah reminds us of what happened at that time. He says, How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning! How you are cut down to the ground, mighty though you were against the nations of the world! For you said to yourself, I will ascend to heaven and rule the angels, the stars of God. I will take the highest throne. I will preside on the mount of assembly far away in the north. I will climb to the highest heavens and be like the Most High. 
And Isaiah says, but instead, you will be brought down to the pit of hell, down to its lowest depths. Lucifer was his name. And he was bright and beautiful and full of wisdom. He had a position of authority over the other angels. But he wanted more. He wanted the throne of God. And there's been a war being waged ever since then, here on earth, as has happened in the heavenly realm. We know that before Jesus began his ministry, he went into the wilderness, and, and there in the wilderness he was tempted by Satan. St. Paul writes to the church, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So the angels are here to help us. And they are prepared for any emergency. And by putting on the armor of God, Satan has no firepower that can ever match the heavenly artillery of God. Which now brings me to that one angel in particular, who I have not even named to you yet, in all this information about the angels. We have Michael. The day, the feast, is called Michael and all angels. Here we have Michael, the archangel, whose name means who is like God. And he has four roles. His first role is as leader of the army of God, the leader of heaven's forces who continually triumph over the powers of Satan and hell. In his second role, Michael is the angel of death who carries the souls of all the deceased to heaven. In this role, Michael descends at the hour of death and gives each soul the chance to redeem itself before passing. And this consternates and foils the devil and all of his minions. In his third role, Michael weighs people's souls in his perfectly balanced scales. For this reason, Michael is often depicted, I don't know if you can see it there, maybe you can see in the picture, you can see that he's often depicted holding a set of weigh scales. Michael's fourth role is to be the patron and guardian of the chosen people of Israel, and by extension, he is the protector of the Christian church as well. So we have Michael on our side, and he has this vast army of angels who have fought against Satan and his forces, and they have hurled them out of the heavens, casting them down to earth, where they continue to roam to this day. The fact that they're here among us is bad news. But the good news is that there will come a day soon when Christ will come in the clouds with his holy angels and they will defeat that old evil foe and his angels of darkness once and for all. Then the time of judgment will occur with Christ's angels sounding the trumpet that raises the dead. The angels will gather the elect and separate the good from the evil ones and lead the good into eternal life with our Father in heaven. Christ, who is the king and ruler over all of these heavenly powers, promises us this. Christ, who sends his angels to assist in bringing us to faith, will bring us to this great reward. Christ who commands the myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands of angel hosts promises to send them to watch over us and protect us and guide us until that day when they will guide us to Christ's kingdom. And so then we will be with the Lord forever then. 
So thanks be to God for his holy angels, including the archangels Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and Uriel, our guardians and our guides. Thanks be to God and his son, the Lamb of God, who is also the king of the angels, for giving us our guardian angels for our sake, for our protection, and for leading and guiding us to our salvation. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We'll stand and we'll sing our next hymn. It's in uh, our Lutheran Book of Worship, number 175, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones.
read as it's found on page 84. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Uh, the choir is going to be that angelic chorus now and sing their anthem, Praise You the Lord.
you please stand for the prayers of intercession? Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. Our response to each prayer petition is, your mercy is great. We pray for the church and its leaders, for council members and music ministers, deacons, pastors, and bishops, especially our newly ordained Bishop of the Eastern Synod, Bishop Carla Blakely. Make us faithful messengers of your love in a world hungry for good news. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for the flourishing of all that you have made, for birds and squirrels, spiders and whales, oak trees and humble grasses. Renew prairies and forests, tundra and wetlands, that they sustain all who make their home there. Hear us, O God. We pray for the peoples of the world and for their leaders. Where conflict and violence reign, bring peace. Wherever there is oppression or discrimination, bring liberation. Guide all in power to protect those who are most vulnerable. Hear us, O God. We pray for all who are suffering this day. Accompany people fleeing from danger and encourage all who help them on their journeys. Abide with all who are in prison or detention centers. Reassure them of your steadfast love. Hear us, O oh God. We pray for all who question their faith. Fill our dry wells with your living water and reassure all who doubt of your boundless grace. Let us accompany all in discernment with open hearts and tender care. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We offer thanksgiving for our beloved dead. At the close of our earthly pilgrimage, gather us with Michael and all the saints and angels into everlasting life in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these in all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of that peace with those gathered around you. The choir is busy today. They're going to be singing now uh, our offertory song. Uh, it's not in a book that we have here. Uh, it's called The Trumpet Sound, The Angels Sing. And if you feel like you'd like to join in on the chorus, you're more than welcome to do so. I'll stay up here.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts and with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus welcomes each and every one of us to this table. Come, join in the feast, for these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
For those who uh, have a gluten intolerance, just a reminder to let me know when you come forward to receive the bread that, uh, that you want a gluten-free option for the bread. Come, now, the table is ready.
technology. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his precious blood strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto life eternal. Amen. Thank the Lord and say in his praise, tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and proudly bear his name. He recalls his promises and leads his people forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. <clears throat> so our Thanksgiving food drive is underway, and uh, non-perishable items you can, and monetary donations, garden produce, you can bring them to the narthex of the church, and uh, we'll get them into the uh, hampers that are going out for Thanksgiving time. Our special Thanksgiving offering uh, for this year is uh, being divided between kitchen renovations and also the sogging hospice. So you can mark your uh, envelopes that it's a uh, Thanksgiving special and uh, that we're giving half and half to our kitchen rentals and sogging hospice. Our Living Our Faith Bible Book Club will be meeting at the end of October. That's a few, a few weeks away now on the 30th at 7 p.m. and we'll be looking at the book of Daniel. And there we read from the book of Daniel this morning. Uh, good food box, the orders are due and payments due by October the 17th and the pickup is going to be on the 24th. Cost of the good food box is $22. Normanby Reflections number three, there'll be a meeting uh, being held at 407 Mary Street on September 30th, so that's tomorrow at 7 p.m. They will be meeting every last Monday of the month as they put together uh, another history book. This week coming up, the Women of Faith will be meeting on Wednesday at 7. There are going to be some guest speakers, so uh, come on out for that. Bring out uh, friends. Always great to have more friends come out. Uh, Thursday's choir practice at 7.30. Uh, I want to uh, welcome some dear friends of mine from St. James Hespler, who uh, decided to take a drive. St. James Hespler no longer exists as a congregation, but, but I was there with him for, what, three years? We were, and uh, we closed the congregation together, but we had a great time together back then. We really did. And so they, uh, trouble here was telling me that, <laughs> that they were going to come up some Sunday she likes to be, no, she does, she does like to be called trouble. She is trouble. <laughs> yes, Luann, you are trouble. <laughs> so they said that they'd be coming some Sunday, and so I'm glad that they were able to be here with us this morning. Uh, please welcome them to be. It's a long drive all the way from Cambridge, but glad that you were able to make it and to be with us today. Greatly appreciated. Uh, yesterday was the ordination uh, service for our new bishop, Carla Blakely, and uh, I was there, Sylvia was there, Sharon was there, um, Mama Joyce was there, so uh, it, was, uh, it was a great day, great afternoon. Uh, you can watch it online. I think if you go to the uh, Eastern Synod's website, it will take you to a link and you can watch the whole service. It was all recorded, so uh, it's well worth watching and hearing some of the, the music, that, all the great music. Uh, the choir did a phenomenal job, bell choir. Um, some of the music we've been singing, right, Sharon? Yeah, some of that music we've been doing here ourselves. So uh, give it a listen to if you have an opportunity. I think that's it for announcements, unless there's anybody else who has an announcement that needs to be made. All right, let's stand and we'll receive the benediction.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 526, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.